Good morning and welcome to our chapter 10. This technically marks the last bit of information that could be found on the AP Stats modified exam for the 2020 year. Uh, so just know that chapter 10, 11, and 12 will go rather quickly. Chapter 10, I do go a little deeper in because this could potentially be on the exam, but 11 and 12, I skim through because we aren't really going to focus on them. But just in case you wanted that knowledge for yourself or you may take statistics in the future, it's important to have that under your belt, especially for research or science-based uh, statistics classes as well. Moving on. Usual information, tacos are the bomb.com. Here's the timer, here's your info, and remember to pause and read through every slide. So here comes the original information before I show the solutions. Here's the given, the setup, there were the results, and here's the question itself. So this is not a four or three part question because it's simply do the data provide convincing evidence, which in itself is a four part question. State plan, do, conclude. Here are the solutions. Again, I suggest you attempt this on your own once or at least read through and mentally set up like, what are we talking about or what don't I know? Those are great questions to ask yourself before seeing the solution. And here they come. So same information, but now I'm highlighting the information that actually makes more sense to the data provide convincing evidence that using name brand popcorn kernels, my gray popcorn will set in greater mean percentage of popped kernels. So they compared name brand to store brand um, and they got this information. Where'd my pen go? Okay. So some important information to just first note is we're dealing with mean values. So we're going to go ahead and label mean of the store brand as mean of N and mean, sorry, mean of the name brand is mean of N and mean of the store brand is mean of S. So just very quickly, we're going to talk about those. And since we're dealing with two populations, we're dealing with either um, a difference or a addition value. And so let's figure that out. When we're thinking about this, if it's going to be a difference, guys. So I'm just walking you through that, that thought process. So if you think about what are you trying to convince yourself of evidence is that there should or shouldn't be a, a significant difference between the name brand and the store brand. Where's their question? Um, will using name brand microwave popcorn result in a greater percentage of popcornals than using store brand? So we're looking at that difference and we want to see that um, this, the, the null, of course, will be that whatever subtraction we do, whether it's mu of n minus or mu, of, we'll talk about that in just a second. But no matter what that is, the null hypothesis is going to be equal to zero, right? Because it, what we know would just be there is no difference between the percentage of pop kernels, whether you're doing name brand or store brand, that's it. But the alternate is saying that name brand results in a greater percentage. And they gave us that. I'm not making that up on my own. They told us that. That's what I'm looking for. So I know that my alternate is going to have to be um, some sort of greater than zero value. And so now we just have to figure out, is it going to be name brand minus store brand or store brand minus name brand? And so because we're thinking about name brand being higher, we need this set right here. We need name brand minus store brand. And if the name brand really does have a significantly higher percentage of popped kernels, then we'll end up with values greater than zero. And that's what we're going to test first. So jumping into those solutions, there's my setup, jumping into those solutions. And like I said, we're going to go through this kind of quickly, rely on the con, tutoring, textbook, or any other information to kind of get you through this if you need to. Uh, state, we want to perform a test where the null hypothesis is the mean of the name brand minus the mean of the store brand equals zero. We talked about that. Versus the alternate where the mean of the name brand minus the mean of the store brand is greater than zero. Again, we talked about that. They didn't give us a significance level, so we assume an alpha level is 0 0.05. I declare it because it's important to. And of course, I talk about what mu of n and mu of s mean. They gave a really beautiful sentence. You could have just put mu of n equals, um, you know, like in shorthand, percent, pop kernel name brand, percent, pop kernel store brand or something. You can, you can absolutely uh, shorthand or, or create shorter mid sentences or like little half sentences. Um, just make sure you are labeling that information. It is important information to know. So if you're still struggling with your statement, if you're like, I still don't get the comparison of two pops when you're doing a state of a null and an alt, you can go to this con for your practice. Uh, a note about the con, though, when you're comparing two groups, um, in this con and in the previous con when we're dealing with testing a claim, there are two different sets under those cons. There's con, there's um, 
the proportion set and then there is the mean set. And since our frappy deals with means in the previous video and in this one, I put the cons for the means. But if you wanna work on a proportion, you sure can scroll up on the con and find those proportions. Step two is plan. You check your conditions and you name that procedure. So our procedure is gonna be a two sample. We know that because we were given two samples. Because we're dealing with means and not proportions, we have to be even further away, right? If we're dealing with proportions, then we're dealing with multiple iterations dealing with probability because probability doesn't occur at one instance. It occurs because we've repeated it thousands of times. So when we're dealing with means, we have to allow for more error. So we're gonna do a two sample. T test for uh, mu n minus mu of s. You can't just put for mu because it's a comparison. So you have to put mu n minus mu s. So ch check if conditions are met. We're going to go through random, 10% uh, and normal or large counts. So random, they told us the data comes from two independent random samples. I can scroll back and uh, find that. Oh, I thought they gave us that information somewhere. Oh, Brian and Magley randomly selected 10 bands. Yeah. They definitely absolutely gave us that information. You can put that in quotes, whatever you've got to do. 10% if I take the 10 bags that they did and multiplied it by 10, um, then 100 bags of name brand or 100 bags of store brand popcorn, probably we have a lot more uh, than 100 in a grocery store or in an, outwe uh, uh, sorry, an outlet or a warehouse or corporate company, or et cetera, et cetera. Because we're dealing with a T test, we actually have to plot that data. So I took this table right here and uh, I went ahead and compared that data on my two different bar uh, box plots right here. And we notice that there are no outliers or strong skewedness. Um, uh, the, the little bit skewed, but they're not super strong skewed. So we're going to go ahead and say it's reasonable to use T procedures. If it wasn't, this would be kind of my ending point. This would be it. Like it's not even reasonable to use T procedures because we have severe skewedness or severe outliers, etc. And that would kind of be it. If I, if they really wanted me to pursue it, I could continue my test, but I would be declaring that at every point, like there is a chance that this is not normal. You know, like you have to account for error at any given moment. Step three is due. And because um, that was planned, so here's the con. Step three is due. And because it's a two part due, you got to deal with the test statistic and then you got to deal with your key value. We have two cons. So just be aware there's two different practices there depending on which part you struggled with or if you struggled with both. So we pulled up some of our data. Uh, this came from calculating from the table. So we used a calculator or a online program, whichever one works for you. We use our T formula to calculate the test statistic, but I can't just put in one of the values because it's a difference. So I have to use uh, for my observed value or my expected values, I've got to use that original difference. And then my um, expected value is zero, right? Because that's what we're looking for. We want it to be equal to zero because that's our null. We deal with the errors individually, and then we end up with this 2.43. This is the part where I think we might struggle a little bit, so maybe practice the con on the test statistic. The p-value is easy enough. You use tech or you use the table, you go calculate it, make sure you're using the correct degrees of freedom. In this case, n minus one is nine. So that's nice and easy. So we end up with a p-value of 0 0.013, which is less than 0 0.05. Oh, sorry, before I move on to conclusion, let's talk to the con. This is the information for test statistic. This is the one I suggest you practice at least one question. Can you do this? That's just a question that, you know, can you, can you get through that? P-value, if you're struggling with p-value still, please go practice it, Google it, tutor, whatever you got to do to get through that. Finally, the conclusion, because 0 0.013 is less than 0 0.05, we have to reject the null hypothesis. Not that we are going to, uh, I've seen some awkward phrasing from students in the past, and I'm going to keep reminding you it's we reject the null or we fail to reject. And it's the fail to reject that I'm seeing some weird languages with, but um, just be aware that those are the two main statements. There are a couple of alternate statements. If you're using those alternate statements, I don't think I've uh, mentioned it in your previous work, but um, there are some awkward statements I'm reading, which don't quite mean fail to reject or reject. So just be aware of your language. Um, because the p-value is less than we reject the null, uh, which means that we're with the alternate hypothesis, we have convincing evidence that the true mean percent of pop kernels is greater for name brand microwave than for a store brand microwave popcorn.
Ta-da, that's it. If you're struggling with conclusion sentences, here's your practice. And of course, as extra practice, if you really wanted to do it, go above and beyond, you could do the unit exam for this topic. Like I said, uh, here's the assignment. It's the same as always. Choose any of the following options. But like I said before, this is kind of it for the APA modified exam for the 2020 coronavirus epidemic. You only really need to know our chapters one through 10. Um, so chapters 11 and 12, they're just kind of going to go through really quickly as a re restate reset. See you in the next video.